What about the um, the slaughtering of the uh, Canaanites by the Israelites? Can you explain that problem and, and show us how you might respond to that? Yeah, so this is the problem of Old Testament violence. And I think for many people, it is a uh, case closed when it comes to the Bible. Like, I can't be a Christian if you worship Yahweh. And he ordered the Israelites to kill not just the army of uh, another mm-hmm. group, not just the Canaanite army, but to lay waste to other, um, you know, to the non combatants involved, to the women and to the children. And so, how could God order something like this? That shows that he's evil. He's bloodthirsty. I want to have nothing to do with a, with a God like that. And so how could you worship a God like that? And Christians have offered a variety of responses to this argument. Um, not every, I don't endorse every response present, but I think it's important for people, especially an atheist who is working through this, uh, to be aware of the different responses. Okay. So on the one end of the extreme, or not extreme, I guess, um, one response might be that, well, uh, this is just something that is a purely human device that represents the barbarism of ancient peoples and that was not inspired by God. God never did anything like this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a part of the Bible that we determine is not relevant today. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it's, it's an error within the Bible. And so it's something that, you know, we don't accept everything, but that, that's just an error. That's one view. It's not a view that I would endorse, but those who say this, I would say, like you said before, what does that prove? Mm. It doesn't prove that we should, it doesn't prove Jesus never rose from the dead. It doesn't prove God doesn't exist. It doesn't prove God never revealed himself. So at best, if you were, you know, I mean, I know Christian theologians who hold a view like this. This is just an erroneous part of the Bible. And yet they're Christians. They believe Jesus is fully divine. Mm-hmm. And so that could be a live option for that atheist, you, you know, if, especially if you're firmly committed to believing in the person of Jesus. Yeah. I would rather you believe in Jesus and you're trying to develop your biblical theology than to just the, throw the whole thing out. Great point. But as I said, that's not a view that, I'm, uh, that I would endorse, but I think it's one that, that could be on the table. And for some people, they may, they may accept that. Another view, and this would be the view that St. Thomas Aquinas takes, is a view that says that there, God has the right to take life. And so if God has the right to take my life or, or your life, then he also has the right to deputize others to, he, he has the right to choose different methods to take human life. And so he's trying to show, uh, you know, in exercising a judgment against this group of people that just as God could, would exercise judgment against nations, uh, against Egypt, against other nations that had plagues. The plagues probably killed men, women, and children mm-hmm. as well. And God, here, God used microbes to mm-hmm. do it. He used small microbial soldiers mm-hmm. to kill men, women, and children. Mm-hmm. And it possibly may have been more suffering from a plague than from being killed by, an, by a soldier, you know? Um, okay. uh, so, I mean, it's still a, 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 a difficult, terrible thing, but God chose to end these people's lives and have a judgment against their their... Uh, civilizations uh, because of the grave depravity of evil they engaged in. I think that in the book of Genesis, I think it's Genesis 15, uh, God prophesies to Abraham that his people, his descendants will be kept in bondage in a land that's not their own, referring to the Exodus, and that it will take 400 years before the land vomits out the Canaanites to wait till their iniquity grows to, Someone's coming to, the grows to fullness. Wonderful. Oh, it's Amazon, but they left. Oh. Again, the benefits of it's, having it's a home the, studio. It's, it's the lost Canaanite coming in here to uh, have his say, you know. Yeah. Um, Sorry, continue. Yeah, so that the the idea here is um, talking about the Amorites in yeah. that instance, Genesis 15, that 400 years will pass until they're vomited from the land, that till their iniquity grows to, you know, they've reached their maximum level of sinfulness, child sacrifice by fire, mm-hmm. you know, thing, things like this they were engaged in. And so if God is allowed to take human life, and he's allowed to use various methods to do that, then doesn't he he have that right as the author of, of human life? And so that is another option that, that can be taken that's historical. Another option that we could take is to say that these passages in the Old Testament uh, do not literally describe uh, actual killing of non-combatants, that these are what you would call exaggerated warfare rhetoric, that they don't actually narrate these events happening, that they were written centuries later during the United Kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of these passages, you know, leave none that breathes, slay man, woman, and child, 
the purpose of these passages is to underscore for the people of Israel at that time, which was long after the Canaanites, is to have nothing to do with, with pagan influences. Now, some will say, well, look, you're just coming with that because you can't stomach the literal sense. Mm-hmm. So you have to make this up mm-hmm. to, to make yourself feel better. I don't think that's the case because when you read the actual biblical text, I believe you can arrive at this conclusion uh, that many of these passages, you find them in books like the book of Joshua. And the book of Joshua has a lot of warfare rhetoric. It's about the conquering of the promised land. But then when you go into books like the book of Judges, you get a very different story about the Amalekites and the Canaanites. They're not completely destroyed. They hound Israel for a very long time, and rather their religious shrines are torn down and they're driven from the land. They're vomited out of the land. So it's really more of a matter of typical ancient Near Eastern warfare conflict, and that these descriptions, leave none that breathes, would be on par with saying, how'd the basketball game go? Oh, we slaughtered them. That doesn't, that doesn't mean they're mm-hmm. wiping off blood from the, the basketball court. A good book on this is written by Paul Capan yeah. and Matthew Flanagan called Did God Really Command Genocide? Okay. And I think it puts forward a, a decent argument that it is that the, the non-literal view of the passages makes sense of our, our understanding of it. And another, it. another resource I'd recommend, though, would be Pope Benedict XVI's Apostolic Exhortation Verbum Domini. Mm-hmm. In there, he talks about the dark passages of Scripture, and the Catechism mentions this, how there are elements of Scripture that are imperfect and provisional that are meant as temporary rules and directives for God's people until they can reach the fullness of what, what God wants to offer them in Christ. The prime example of that would be divorce. Mm-hmm. God allowed in the law, Deuteronomy, allows the evil of divorce to prevent, Aquinas said it was to prevent the greater evil of wife murder. Mm -hmm. That was his belief. Uh, That God, you have hardened hearts. I'm going to give you an imperfect law that you can follow. It's not forever, yeah. But it's not forever. And we do this the same today. Like, how could someone do that? Like, well, I might have to say, you know what? Abortion is legal in the case of rape, but it's illegal in other cases. Why did I give that law if I'm a legislator? Because I know it's the only one you guys will follow. If I right. ban abortion in all cases, I'm, the law will just be ignored or I'll be voted out but of But isn't office. there a difference between allowing divorce and commanding genocide? Okay, sure. And so the difference here is that when you have uh, things that are that are required based on certain historical contexts, once again, we would go back to that God did not say that the Israelites could make a judgment for themselves mm. about you can take human life whenever you feel like gotcha. in the sense of uh, uh, now it would be even worse, I'd say, to allow genocide in the sense of you can end the life of any human being you feel is necessary, just like you can write a writ of divorce. Mm. In fact, God specifically commanded Israel to not go to war with other nations, to leave, leave to not get into fights with Moab, the Moabites, for instance. But here, God is uh, restricting and exercising his authority that he rightly has to take human life, if that is what he did, to exercise it in a very limited circumstance rather than giving some kind of a, a general command or an mm-hmm. allowance. But I lean towards the view that, it is, um, that it's non-literal based on all the elements in the passages. Okay. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.